Hey, guys, it's great to get together again, but we have a plus this time. Yes. It's just been the three of us before talking, but now we have Kathy with us. Who's Kathy, Ron? She's my wife. Oh, oh. The wife okay. is here. Well, I knew that. I tell, her, I tell everyone she's the best wife I've got. We've been married 31 years now. 31 oh, years. Good. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's, Congratulations. Well, I want you guys to tell us sort of your background and what led you to the uh, the thing that you're involved in, uh, the Prophecy, Dateline, uh, TV shows and all. So I want you to tell about that. And I want, I want Thomas to tell, he made the statement last time we were here that he had been dead. Yes. <laughs> did, did I hear that right? You heard yes. that right. I think so. He looks want, pretty good for being dead. <laughs> yeah, you, you, really, you look pretty good, Tom. Not bad, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like you to, maybe let's start off on that. Tell, give us your story a bit um, in relative well, to my, your being dead. My, uh, my testimony is pretty average when it comes to uh, accepting the Lord. I was very young, mm -hmm. 12 years old, went through all that. Grew up in the Catholic world and also the Baptist world because I'm a military brat. So that's what we had to choose from. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up getting married, having some kids, and then things went awry. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up with a five and seven year old, my children, to raise on my own. A few years later, we moved to Albuquerque. And uh, just one month before the excavation started, as a matter of fact, Oh. And right after I was put on staff at Trinity Southwest University by Dr. Collins, uh, I had come home from church one day, put on my work jeans, and went out in the backyard and cut down this tree from hell, I used to call it, because it was an acacia tree with great big thorns. I wanted oh, it out. Yeah. So I cut that thing up, bucked it up, stacked it up, and had a massive heart attack and died. Uh, yeah. To make oh. a long story short, Finally, the, the paramedics get to the house. I can't talk anymore because I'm gone, pretty much. They throw me in the ambulance. And in the ambulance, I'm speaking to God. And I said, Lord, obviously, I'm, I'm dying. And, and if you want to meet me face to face, or if this is my time, then I'm ready. Uh -huh. Okay? I'm ready to meet you face to face. Uh -huh. But then, of course, I turned into Abraham. And started negotiating. <laughs> Abraham negotiated over how many righteous people might be in the city of Sodom. So here I am uh, talking to the Lord, and, and I said, But I have two children that really, really need me. And uh, right before my eyes closed and I died, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Thomas, don't worry, I'm not finished with you. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. Right? 15 or 20 minutes later, they push a dead man on the gurney into the hospital after the long ambulance ride. And I just woke up. Lord brought me back to life. Everybody was kind of in shock, you know. I was ready to go home. I could have run home that night because wow. I was totally healed uh -huh. from top to bottom. Praise By God. the way, no complications whatsoever. Oh. No Hallelujah. scarring tissues. No nothing. And literally just one month later, I'm on a plane going to Jordan to start excavating the city of Sodom. <laughs> and things it. have just been kind of like a going into orbit ever since. And I've spoken in churches all over the country uh. and uh, have, have, you know, brought many people. It's not me, but the Lord yeah. working through right. me, right. Uh, his Holy Spirit. And the light that we were talking about on the last segment yes. uh, draws people yes. to find out what it is makes you tick. Right. And, and I can tell you, point blank, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. You know why God, God said I'm not through the with you moment. then, right? Well, I have yeah. a feeling he's yeah. still not through. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're doing what you, you feel God is leading you to do in that he's giving you an extended period of time. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes I, I know that he's not finished. My job is to try to help prepare the way uh, for many, many people that are not ready, yeah. that don't right. understand the historicity of the, of the word, that it's actually true. These are not fairy tales Amen. in the word. Yeah. It's true, and you can, you know, you shouldn't gamble your salvation 
Oh. Uh, these are fairy tales. Yeah. I would not yeah. gamble That's if right. there's something wrong in here. Yeah. On the contrary, I'd spend the time to read it and learn it and, and let the Lord work yes. in your life. Yes. Well, I know what Thomas has said is real encouragement to you guys because of what he's brought you through. You didn't know anything about Thomas before in that experience. No. So I'm, right. I'm sure that was an encouragement to you. It was to me. He does not know what God led you through. And no. I think if you tell us about that, it'll be an encouragement to Thomas also. Mm. I think the springboard off that I think many Christians allow the devil to foreclose on their heavenly home. Because mm. every time you pray, you're making payments. Mm. And if you're, not, yeah. you're making payments yeah. on that home, the devil comes in and forecloses on it. We got to learn as Christians, start fighting for our heavenly home. Because that's what Satan wants to steal from us, is that. Is that. But uh, the miracles, my, my, my wife and I, we've seen so many miracles. Why? Because for now, we, we're, I believe this, that when God prepares a way before you, he does, he prepares you first. Mm -hmm. Then as he prepares you, he puts you on the shelf, let you marinate for a while, and he prepares those that you're going to meet in the future. And this is one of those meetings. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. That, that prepared Amen. to meet. Because in yeah. our film, I need, uh, we have an archaeologist. We have, we have a, uh, in the movie that we're writing, my wife and I have been, been preparing for this now for 25 years or more. Yes. And we've been working on the screenplay uh, of over seven years in this, in this area of, of L.A. And we lived in Africa 14 years. That's, that was our home. Okay, the Lord took us from one jungle to another jungle. Mm. <laughs> and why? Because we're not our own. Yeah. We're bought with a price. Yeah. If I had my druthers, I'd never live in L.A. But I don't have my druthers. Uh -huh. I have, I have, I have my, my father's promise. If you, if you will seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, that he, that he will come in and he will bless us. And we, we were millionaires at one time. And will be again. Why? Because God, he's going to restore what he took away from us so he could refine us, Dudley. Mm -hmm. And Kathy, what, what, what do you have to say here? A person's whole life from birth or even from conception unto his death is in the scripture. Everything has a beginning and an end on this earth. With God, it's different, of course. He has always been, always is, and always will be. But there comes a point in each person's life, even after they've been redeemed, as you pointed out, Thomas, as we discovered in our lives of following the will of God, you have to choose to allow God to be master and Lord of your life. If you do not, you have salvation. But what about the rest of the promises that go with it? We chose to lay down our lives for the Lord, Adonai. We chose to accept his will and his only. We chose to wait upon God to the point of being criticized for it. We chose to obey the Lord and his commandments. We chose initially salvation is the first choice in your life of walking with God. But every day you make choices after that, choosing to do His will. That leads you in His way, in His very footsteps. We chose every time to do it God's way according to His word. And then He lined up every person, every situation, everything, good and bad, that happened in our lives. Because the scripture says, what the devil means to our destruction, God means that same thing to our good. So, no matter what the circumstances are, there is light at the end of the tunnel, one old phrase. Mm -hmm. No matter what your upbringing is, you don't have to stick to it. That's earthly, that's worldly. That is sinful because we are born in sin. We can choose to leave behind the heartaches, the troubles, the afflictions, the persecutions, the tribulations of any period of time in our lives 
and live joyously in the light of this world, which is Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you a miracle. Yes, do uh, that. We, we were living in Africa. We spent most of our married life there. And I, I, and I had a dream. Uh, we, we, were, we were actually holding meetings in villages outside of Harare, Zimbabwe. That's where we, where we lived at. And I had a dream of an American school bus in was is called the Lamander Village, which is about 20 Ks outside of Harare. And I saw an American school bus. Well, they don't have a, American school buses in Africa. And I said, I woke up to old Kathy, I saw an American school bus there. The Lord's going to give us a school bus. So we came, we came back to America. We were so excited. And we, we didn't know how he's going to do it. But see, we serve a God who can do all things, right? So I, I told the Lord, if you're going to send a school bus, send us a suburban too. <laughs> okay, why not? Okay, so you have not because you asked that. So we, we bought a little toy school bus, a little plastic one, and we went to the churches throughout Missouri and Arkansas. And so we start, we go to prayer. Okay, Lord, how are we going to ship this thing? Now, we have no school bus except for a toy one. <laughs> we had no suburban. And the Lord showed us, I'll send it for free. Okay. So I, I said to the people, if God can create the heaven and earth, can he send a school bus and suburban to Africa for free? Yes, he can do that. We had dozens of churches throughout Arkansas, Missouri, saving stuff from their Sunday school material, because I said, I'm going to send a school bus full of material all yes. the way, all the uh, way. Bibles, children's Sunday school materials, uh, some clothing, but not a lot. Uh -huh. Musical instruments. Yes. Mm. All kinds of things that uh, were relevant to the life of Christ for the people in Africa. So we had no school bus. We had no suburban. We had no money. Okay? We were on to, went to a church in Springfield, Missouri. I'll never forget this. Never been there before. It was on a Wednesday night. And his pastor heard about what we're going to be doing. He said, I never heard of such faith. And so we walked in his office about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The service was 7. He said, what do you need? I said, I need a suburban. I need a suburban. The Lord told me it's going to be a six-cylinder with a, with a, with a four-speed on the floor. He goes, they don't make suburbans like that. I said, Pastor, I will find my suburban. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. There's a suburban for sale across the street from the church in somebody's front yard. We walk over there, and the first thing I look, I see this, this oh, it's a four-speed in the floor. floor. I said, it's going to be a six-cylinder. And the pastor was stunned. We opened the bonnet. Up, uh -huh. And there's a six-cylinder inside this Suburban. He says, this has got to be the Lord. Yeah. He said, we're going to buy the Suburban for you and give you $1,000 to fix it up. So, okay, we have Suburban, right? One down. Now, uh -huh. this is what happened. Oh, this is hilarious. So we, we live in a motorhome. That's what we had. We had a motorhome. So we're, we're, uh, we, we're traveling by a school bus. The place where they sell school buses is, is a used car lot oh, yeah. or it, uh -huh. outside St. Louis. Yeah. And we okay. s walked in and I said, sir, you can't sell that school bus. I said, I have no money to put down, but that school bus is going to Africa. you got to take that school bus out because God wants that school bus. That's like, like the mule. He <laughs> wants that school bus <laughs> yeah. to go to Africa. Yeah, yeah. He goes, are you nuts? Oh, I said, no, do what I ask or God's going to bless you. He said, here's the keys. Go pull it behind the buildings. No one else buys it. I said, I have no idea how long this is going to take. It may be two or three months. Can you wait that long for the Lord? Yes. I don't even know this guy. I don't know if he's <laughs> even saved or not. Right? So, so we leave, right? We, and we're, we're driving down the road, and, and we're, we get into a motorhome, and this is a miracle, absolute miracle. We're in Missouri, and we're, cro we're crossing a ferry on Sunday morning, and we're going to ministry in Arkansas, all right? We're in, our, we're in our motorhome, we're crossing this ferry, and we get on there, and the ferry goes across, and we get off, and we, and we drive up on land, you know? And 9 o'clock that Sunday morning, we see on this little country road in the middle of nowhere, a volunteer fire station. Mm -hmm. So we, we saw them, as, in a motorhome, we travel slow, you know? Especially when you're poor like we were. And... And so we're traveling slow, and we see this guy. He put a church sign up. And I just drive in. They're having church in the fire station. 
<laughs> yeah. Sounds good. So we yeah. walk in there. I said, we're missionaries from Africa. He's so good, you're ministering this morning. We don't even know this guy. Yeah. There was a couple, their name was Bo and Dane Johnston. And they sat in the front row, and, and they, after we ministered, they said, will you come to our place for, for lunch? Why, sure. We had no place to go. We, had, we probably didn't have any food anyhow. We went to their place for lunch. They said, what are you doing? I said, we're working on our first book right now. We need a place to park our motor home for the summer. And they said, we got five acres of land way up in the boondocks. The closest neighbor is a half mile away. Oh, this is the famous Ozark Mountains uh -huh. in the uh, southern Missouri and northern Arkansas region. Uh -huh. So here, we park our motor home there and we start walking. Okay, we start walking down into the valley. There was three houses down there, and there's a little lady out there. She's out there gardening, and every day we go to her and talk to her about the Lord, right? We're there about a month, and she says, would you come this Saturday to meet my son? I said, sure. What does he do for a living? Oh, he works for a shipping firm that ships vehicles across the world. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. That's how the Lord does it. This man, we, everyone together. we met him at 10 o'clock that day. He gave us the phone number to the owner of Like Shipping in New Orleans. And we called it, we go and we call this man up. He's in the shower. His <laughs> wife says, okay, he'll call you back. He never called us back. But we knew, we knew you guys that God was going to do it. On faith, yes. we sold our motorhome and went and bought the school bus, and we had no place to live because uh -huh. we had to get the school bus ready to go to Africa. Uh -huh. This was August. It was December 27th before the Lord showed me, go and call this man. We were homeless, living with a pastor who could, he had to get rid of us. How was he, here we're stuck, right? <laughs> and... Walked in, I'll never forget this. Call this man up and I said, I, we're, we have a school bus in Suburban to be shipped to Africa. We talked to your wife in August. And he says, what do you have? I said, we got the school bus, it's ready to go. He said, well, he said, twice a year I do this for free. I'm gonna ship yours for nothing. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. That's my God. Right. And he gave us a choice of shipping dates, uh, three of them, January, yep. February, March. Uh, we chose the one in January. It was quite significant. It was happened to be, by God's plan, my husband's spiritual birth date. So we knew that God was in everything. Yeah, yeah. So, see, our God is full of miracles. And I told my wife from that day, I said, this, it's not the school bus. It's not the suburban. That's important. It's training. Training how to walk. And today... That training that we had to listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't listen to anyone. I'll never forget one pastor said to me, how much is it going to cost to send a school bus in suburban to Africa? I said, zero. <laughs> zero. Did you check on how much it's going to cost? I said, yes. I asked Jesus. He said, zero. <laughs> and it was zero. Yeah. Well, praise God. And I, I presume the school bus uh, and the suburban were used for great missionary yes. work over there. It, we used it, we made it into a motor home in the back, and we used it for tribal land ministry throughout all of Zimbabwe. And today, one of the writers of The Passion of Christ actually has written a screenplay and going to do a movie on our life in Africa in the school bus. Ooh, very good. So that's a part of your, what do you call it, trilogy? Trilogy, it's part and of the trilogy. It'll be part of it, so... Yeah. On your life, I won't mention your, your name. Or Ron and Kathy Buttram. <laughs> or Ron Buttram, my wife, Kathy. Uh, is, you know, we're irrelevant, but God's yeah. word is what's important. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. And it's, yeah. uh, I, I never take credit for anything. How could I? Yeah. I'm, I'm just a common, regular, old sinner, you know. And uh, believe me, I have never claimed sainthood <laughs> at all. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea why he's using me like this. I really is sort of confounding sometimes because you know, hey, I swing a hammer half the time, you know, and uh, and build houses and things. And so, 
But he can use anyone to do his work for him. You just have to be available. Yeah. Do you guys see some compatibility here, some working together? Um, yeah, between our, the two of you, our film is a, is a is a Indiana Jones film with an archaeologist, oh. and his name is Daniel Horowitz, who discovers from the Dead Sea Scrolls that we're in the last days, and we're going to be shooting in Israel. Fantastic. Part of the film is shot in Israel, part part in Switzerland, and it's it's we need a digging places. Yeah, well, maybe you need someone to hold on. To the, I'll be your grip. <laughs> <laughs> There's but you're thinking you could be filming maybe some of the areas that uh, that Thomas has been at in, in digging in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? You know, this is what I've learned. It never ends up the way you think it's going to. Yeah. But we start out one way, and God says, okay, you can meet this place. Now let's go over and do it this way. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. There's a reason why we're meeting today. Mm. You don't understand. I understand the significance of it because I know my screenplay. And... You don't understand fully what God's about ready to do in your life, Thomas. And I'm prophesying I'm just to you. Ready right now. and available. I'm prophesying to you right now. Okay, I'm God's listening. about ready to take your knowledge that you have, and, you, and we're going to. Uh, he's going to allow it to uh, to enlighten the world well, that He is coming soon. He is coming soon, and we do need to be prepared. Yes. We cannot be caught like a thief in the night. Yes. All right, true believers the bride of Christ, mm -hmm. need to know the seasons, need to know what's going on in today's world, yep. and correlate that with the prophecies on Israel. It's not, it's not difficult. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then we see exactly where we're at in the prophetic timetable and, and what's coming next. Because Israel is obviously restored yeah. since 1947. And that, of course, blew all the, all the church theologians mm -hmm. yeah. away. They had no idea that was coming. Not all of them, yeah. you know, because replacement theology was, was running amok in, in all the denominations. Now, 63 years later, yep. like, well, okay, I think we can understand this a little <laughs> more clearly yeah. now. Now that it's there. When the, when the Lord says it so perfectly. Yeah. For anyone yeah. to understand. The uh, ar archaeology. Uh, listen to this. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Um, can we kind of wait on that until okay. the next session? We can do that. Because I'd like, us, I'd like to share with someone else on this possibly, but I think what you're about to tell us, uh, ju just give it real brief so that, so that I'm anxious to get back to see you. The New York Times has proved the word of God is coming true? It has. It has. And you'll tell us about and that. And I'll tell about it. The New York okay. Times. The New York All right. Times. We're gonna get I want to hear that. Yeah, we're going to get together. The New York Times. We'll get together again for that. And Kathy, we're glad you joined us, too. Oh, you know, thank this you is, so this much. is just great, very inspirational. So thanks, everybody. You know, this is fun. <laughs>